With steampunk becoming a more mainstream phenomena, many people are now taking interest in Victorian fashion and culture. There are many of today's leading fashion designers adding Victorian elements to their modern clothing lines, and there's many Victorian era books available for free download online right now, some of which I'm reading. Part of this revival is the collection of Memento More, or Mementos of Death. The Victorians were masters of this, and a simple Google search can bring up thousands and thousands of images of their morning jewelry. And I have some examples that I've made here, and this is nothing in comparison to what the Victorians were doing. This is just my own little collection, and this is just a small part of my collection of death mementos. You can see here there's some hair, and this is from a cat, and it shows his patterning. And when you're collecting hair for your mementos, you want to take into consideration how you're going to want to style it. And when trimming hair from a pet, if they had a pattern, make sure that you get that pattern within your cut. And you see that here as well. You can actually see that he was a striped tabby by the stripes there. You can put it in all sorts of containers. I have some here that are bottles. You can make lockets. And you can make them as elaborate or as simple as you want. This is one of my more elaborate projects. And you can have them so that you can wear them every day as well. This is hair from my dog Taz. And this is his other sample of hair, his locket there. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare hair for mounting in a locket or a jar. I'm going to put the sample I'm working with in one of these jars to match the rest of my collection here. You can put it in the locket. Um, these are coin capsules that you can pick up at a coin collector's shop or you can buy them easily online. The size you get is up to you. It all depends on how elaborate you want your finished product to be. So we're going to go ahead and start the process. First I'm going to show you what you're going to need to do this. So obviously you're going to need some hair samples. I'm going to be working with this one today. This is from one of my aunts. You're also going to want to decide on what you're going to be putting the hair in. As mentioned earlier, I am going to be putting it in this little jar here. But don't be limited to just one style or a jar. You can get all sorts of different lockets and pendants for this task. You can even repurpose old watches and all kinds of things for using as a locket. You're going to want a container for warm water. You're going to need tweezers, scissors, combs, any styling implements that you wish to use, elastic bands, hairspray, shampoo, paper towel, and a hair dryer. First task is selecting the amount of hair that you want to use. Obviously I'm not going to put all of this hair in that little bottle. So I'm going to open the bag up and take a selection of what I do want to use. I'm going to choose a section that shows various colorations. I'm going to take this chunk right here. going to put elastic around the other section to keep that intact. Alright, so this can go back in its bag. So 
So now that we have the sample that we are going to be working with, I'm going to put an elastic on this because if you just wash this as is, it's all going to come apart and it's going to be very hard to work with. Now that we have this all bound up, I'm just going to do a very light comb and you can see there is some of that that is coming out, which is not too big of a problem. So there's no tangles in this, it's ready for the washing. Snowflake, how are you? Just want to give that a little bit of a soak. The sample has been in my possession for probably nine years now. I'd cut her hair and I saved it. And it was just kicking around in a drawer for a while. So I want to actually do something with it now. Put it with the rest of my hair samples. Now, if you get your sample fresh enough, you can put it right into its jar as is. It will be all right. But if, like this one, it's been sitting a while or the person you've taken the sample from had greasy hair or they had a lot of hair styling products in it, you do want to take some of that out before you store it because the oils from their hair or the hairstyling residue can mold. So you want to make sure you store clean, dry specimens. You just want to use a little bit of shampoo because you're not working with a large sample. And if this is going to be a death memento and it's going to be something that you want to scent you can use their favorite perfume in the wash water or if you know what their favorite shampoo was you can use that as well and the hair is very porous it'll retain any scent that you put in it for an extremely long time so that's pretty well rinsed you just wring it out And then lay this on the paper towel to remove as much of the moisture as you can. You want to hold your hair dryer firmly between your legs like this to hold it in place without blocking the back because it does need to have air circulation to keep it from overheating. So this is going to be a bit noisy. I might reduce the sound a bit. So pretty much all you're going to be doing is holding it firmly, then rubbing the hair through the heat. Now you're going to assess how much of this is actually going to go into your jar. I'm going to use about half of it. I'm just going to separate that here. So we have our nice little lock of hair here. I'm just going to clamp this into the little holder device. If you don't have one of these, this is fine. You can take a clothespin and some string and put this onto the back of a chair or a little nail on the wall. However you'd like to have it held. And this is where your hairspray will come in. give it a small enough mist just so it doesn't have any little flyaways or tips. 
that are going to be sticking up as you're braiding this. You want it to be stalled very cleanly and straight. So now that we're at the end comes a little bit more of a difficult part, at least for me anyway. I don't want to put another elastic on the end of this to hold it because I want to have more of a curl. I'm just going to soak that with some hairspray to hold that down. I'm going to fix up this braid a little bit more here. So now that we're at the very tip, I'm going to comb that through a little bit. I'm going to put a bobby pin onto the end. See if I can get it to curl. It wants to curl backwards, so that's how we're going to curl it. So I'm just going to clamp this together with my forceps and let this dry for a little bit. Or it may be a better idea just to use another bobby pin across it. So we've got that locked, we're just going to leave this until the hairspray dries. So you can see that this has got a really nice curl to it, now that the hairspray has hardened. I'm going to exaggerate that curl just a little bit by going in with some tweezers and rolling it backwards. I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. I'm hoping this unravels right when I stick it in the bottle. There we go. Now I think I want to get this on the bottom, so we'll just pull it back out. It still has that nice curl. on curling as well as it had the last time so I'm just going to give it another try and that's another thing you have to remember when you're doing this stuff is that you have to have a lot of patience I think I might actually cut this tip off here There we go. So here's the finished product. As you can see it has that really nice spiral there. Came out really well. Eventually I think I'm going to put some dried flowers in the bottom there as some decoration and a bit of color. Just a few different flowers that I know that she likes and that would look really pretty in there with her hair. I'm going to leave this bottle open for a couple days just to let any remaining moisture evaporate because as I said hair will mold if it is put sealed wet. 
I've seen this happen a few times and it's not very pretty it will disintegrate it so when you're making morning jewelry with hair and even bone before you seal it airtight you want to make sure that it has all of the moisture evaporated out of it 